All right, we're gonna do a smell test real quick. Mmm, nope. Mm -mm. I have really big old long granddaddy grandpa brows, whisker brows. Mmm, no, 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 no. All right. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy. Thank you so, so much for being here. I really appreciate it as always. Today's video is going to be all about makeup, but not just any makeup. It's gonna be about my oldest makeup that I have in my collection. And we're gonna be doing a full face of really old makeup. We're talking eight, nine, 10, sometimes 12 years in some cases. And I was really inspired to do this video from a fellow YouTuber here on YouTube, Shanix. So she actually did this video a couple of days ago. And whenever I saw her do it, now she declutters a lot of products on her channel. And so she doesn't have a lot of like old products, like eight, nine, 10 year old products, but she has a lot of products that she has repurchased throughout the years. And I wanted to kind of put my own spin on that video and actually use really old products but then talk about the products that I was inspired to buy for whatever reason. So shopping at Mac for the first time. And a lot of these products are not like super duper old, but some of them are. If y'all are new to my channel and you don't know, I'm a Louisiana girl. We had a tremendous like historical flood in 2016. So I was a, a working makeup artist at that time and I lost virtually all of my makeup. I had uh, two makeup kits. I had a, a set bag and then I had storage of uh, makeup that actually didn't get touched. And some of the things that are in this video are the things that didn't get touched. So if you are interested in seeing which products that I have held on to for God knows what kind of reason and see me put it on my face and see how it turns out, then please keep on watching. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do before we get started is I'm going to put my hair up, but I just wanted to mention this really quickly before we get started. As I scan my eyes across my vanity top here, I have a lot of MAC products. And if y'all weren't a YouTuber or um, around to watch YouTube back in the day, I'm talking 2008, 2009, 2010, MAC was the epitome of makeup products like if you wanted something different if you wanted an eyeshadow palette if you wanted like the top of the line stuff you would go to mac and i can remember mac being like it was huge it was huge everybody did mac videos like top 10 eyeshadows to buy at mac top 10 like blushes to get at mac lipsticks back to mac and then it kind of became, it was like they were at the top of their game and then slowly kind of had a decline. And then the videos became why I quit working at Mac, um, why I stopped shopping at Mac. It seemed like in 2008 and 2009, when I would go to Mac every single time, I would be so excited. I'd be so excited. I'd have like a budget and I'm going to get a MAC lipstick. Like, mm, I'm going to get a MAC li lipstick, it's gonna change my life. And then I'd walk in there, and somehow or another, I wouldn't get my feelings hurt per se, but it wasn't always the best type of experience. So since we're already on the subject of MAC, let's talk about the first MAC product that I'm gonna use, and that is a MAC Prep and Prime. Now, these are the little, like, twisty up sticks that I purchased, I wanna say in like 2013, maybe 2012. And I wasn't really sure what color to get. I remember going into the store and being really confused about which one that I was gonna get. And of course, I didn't really have an associate to answer my questions. And I don't find that they are highlighter sticks, more like a brightening stick. And I found these to be very, very helpful with kind of carving out the eyebrow and highlighting under the eyes, but not in a shimmery uh, type of way. So I have this one in Radiant Rose. These are probably really, really nasty, um, but we'll see. I wanna see if it has a, no, it, it doesn't smell bad. And then I have this one in Bright Forecast. 
And I used to use these quite often. I think I used this one the most because it's like, oh, it's like the dirtiest, but whatever. I, this one seems really, really dark. So maybe I'll just use the kind of pinkier toned one. And I'm just gonna use it like underneath my eyes here on both sides. And then also on my eyelids. And then right here on my forehead, kind of like I do with the Clinique um, airbrush concealer. This is just going to kind of like lighten up any dark spots that we have. And then I'm just going to tap it in with my fingers. And now that I'm using this product again, I see why I actually bought it in the first place. Because it brightens the face, it brightens the under eye, and it just makes it look so, so nice. So I actually might declutter this, um, which one was it? The Bright Forecast one and keep the Radiant Rose one, which is the one I use under my eye because it's actually still really, really nice. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to foundation. And for that today, I'm gonna be using the L'Oreal True Match. So I have been a L'Oreal girl for a really, really long time. If y'all don't know, I'm a L'Oreal Pro Glow lady bitch and I I just enjoy the L'Oreal formula it's really really nice in fact I would keep these in my kit so I didn't have a lot of money to spend on makeup products at the time especially for my makeup kit and I always found that these worked really really well um, regardless of the skin type so if you had dry skin if you had oily skin if you had combination you know the drill this would always seem to work especially for flash photography because there's no it well it does have spf in it but it doesn't have a whole lot it's like spf 17 so it's not enough to have flashback whenever um, you have flash photography today we're going to go in with the shade light ivory which is w2 and i'm going to mix it with w4 now i've had these probably for nine years or so. They're very well loved. I had a whole case of these in my makeup kit which flooded in 2016 so I don't have that anymore. So these are the only shades that I have left and so yeah that's what we're going to go with. So W if you don't know W is warm um, and then C is cool. So these are W2, W4 and I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and it doesn't seem to be separated. Of course, I shook it up a little bit too, so that probably helped. And then I'm gonna take just a dollop of W4 and I'm gonna mix it. So you can see W2, W4. I always remembered really liking this foundation. I mean, it's not as dewy as I like, so, you know, it's gonna be what it's gonna be because we're using old ass foundation, old ass makeup products. And I'm gonna blend this in with a good old fashioned beauty blender. So I'm just gonna take a little bit on the back of my hand here and then just pounce away. And it actually has pretty good coverage. It's more of like a, a natural finish, if I remember. And it dries really quickly. So I'm just gonna kind of go in here mighty fast. So now that I'm looking at this foundation up close in the mirror, I think it is time for me to declutter these because this foundation just does not look good on my face. It is not the foundation that I remember. It used to be somewhat kind of a natural radiant foundation with just a little bit of matte. It was full coverage. It didn't cling to dry patches. It didn't separate and it's doing all of that. So I have like some dry patches right here that is clinging to. It's doing something really weird on my nose. It's kind of sinking into pores, but it's also separating. Um, it looks really, really cakey in different spots. And I just am, am not satisfied. I have a MAC concealer next. And this is the MAC uh, Pro Longwear Concealer. I remember I bought three of these. I bought this one in NW20. I bought an NC10, I think it was, that flooded in my makeup kit. And then I had a uh, darker shade. I think it was like NC or NW45. I don't know if I still have it. If I still have it, it's in one of these bins over here. But this is what the packaging looks like. And whenever you take it off, to take the cap off, this is what the uh, little pump looks like. Um, I was so, so proud of myself for going into the store and picking these up. It just made me feel like I was really 
gonna be a real makeup artist. You know, like I'm gonna have this in my kit and it's gonna be like legit. I'm gonna have it in my kit and it's gonna be legit. Ooh, <laughs> we got a plug. Ooh, there it goes. Oh, it's been a hot minute since I've used this. I'm just gonna use some of this underneath the eye. And I mean, what the hell? I'm just gonna put a little bit in my forehead and a little bit on my chin. And let's see where else I need some coverage because you girl's looking a little, a little ate up. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember why I liked this concealer so much. It was brightening. It had nice coverage. Look at this concealer, y'all, at the tip. It just looks like a big old turd sticking out. <laughs> I actually think it's time for me to get rid of this one as well. I'm just gonna put this in the get rid of bin in the get rid of section right here on my vanity. All right, so next up is going to be bronzer. And I couldn't decide which bronzer to use, so I have two different ones. I have this one from Milani, and this is the medium tan multitasker face powder. So this isn't even a bronzer at all, it was just a face powder. So this is the Hourglass Alum Sheer Color Trio in the shade Sunset. And whenever you open it up, this is what it looks like. And I remember vividly watching a Pixie Woo video back in the day, probably when, maybe 2014, something like that. And Nick was talking about this product and she used it. She used the bronzer, she used the, br the blush, and she used the highlighter and she looked absolutely freaking gorgeous. And so I went to my local Sephora and I bought this stuff. And Hourglass is not cheap, y'all. It is not cheap at all, but I had to have it. It was so, so pretty. And like, I'm just gonna give a little swatch. I don't know if I wanna use this because it kind of feels weird, but that is what it looks like. So the bronzer, the blush, and the highlighter and just swatch that onto my hand. That's what it looks like. Dang, that, that a highlighter looks really, really pretty. The blush does too. And the bronzer. I don't know. We might use it today. I'm afraid it's going to take off my foundation though. And I kind of need my makeup to look good because I need to film another video after this. So I think we're going to go in with the Milani product. I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury blusher brush. And I'm just going to swirl it around and go ham obviously oh yeah this is actually a really pretty color it's kind of on the warm side which i like i like it to look a little bit more natural i'm gonna go across my nose just slightly <sighs> gets in my nose in my nose not on my nose so the next product that i'm gonna use is contour and i don't know if y'all remember 2008 2009 probably even 2010 and 11 Ben Nye was a significant brand here on YouTube. All of the big names in the beauty community would use their products. They would be sent all these fantastically amazing eyeshadow palettes and like quads and um, face paints and just all of these really, really cool products. And they would promote them nonstop. It was like Ben Nye everything. Well, I remember buying my first Ben Nye product and it was contour so this is the ben nye powder rouge contour in number one and i'm going to go in with an oldie but goodie this is a polydorf brush and this is so highly pigmented so um ben nye is one of those brands where a little bit goes a long way they were kind of one of the first people one of the first brands that i can remember that had some of the most pigmented eyeshadows like Ben Nye would come out with stuff that was absolutely mind blowing. And I find that they have dwindled over the years. Nobody on YouTube really talks about them anymore. Um, I know they're probably in business because they're Ben Nye. It's theater makeup. I mean, it's like one of those brands that will always be there. Mayron, Ben Nye, you know what I'm saying. Um, but this product is so, so pigmented and it, it takes just a teeny, teeny tiny little bit to really pack a punch. So I'm gonna use this as contour. And if y'all been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I don't contour like right here because it makes my cheeks a little bit more round. So I contour a little bit above that. So like right there into my sideburn sideburns. And then I just kind of take it to meet it up with that um, cheekbone area. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Actually, this is not nearly as pigmented as I remember it. Um, probably because it's old as shit. So let me just show you what the 
what the pan looks like. I have used this. I have loved this for so, so long. If I was going to do some sort of like crazy makeup look, Ben Nye was my go-to. So now we're going to move on to my favorite, favorite part, and that is eyeshadows. And back in the day, well, still, nothing has really changed, but eyeshadow palettes were my thing. And I have not as many eyeshadow palettes as I used to. A lot of them I lost in the flood. But I have a couple of products that I want to talk about that were so nostalgic to me that kind of like was a catalyst for my real true passion of makeup. And these were hugely, hugely popular in the YouTube community. Everybody talked about this in their collection. This is the Aqua Glow UV Day Glow Palette. And these are like all water activated um, eyeshadows or liners or whatever. These never really did work for me. I just kept it for nostalgia purposes. And every once in a while, I'll try them again. And then I'm disappointed again, basically. But this is what it looks like. And basically, you would take your brush, you'd put a little water in it, kind of like a like a paint by color set. You know what I'm talking about? It has those little pots. This is really no different. But the colors are so, so vivid. And it was unlike anything that anybody had in their collection at the time. And once again, this is something that I keep just for nostalgia purposes. And back in the day, brands used to not really have eyeshadow palettes. They have like the three pan or the four pan palette, like brands like CoverGirl and L'Oreal, Maybelline, that type of thing. Um, but then whenever I discovered MAC, of course, they had like the single eyeshadows that most of the drugstore brands never would sell. And you would go in there and then ingenious YouTubers would teach you how to depot those single eyeshadows. And I used to love sitting in my room by myself and I would sit there and I would depot my eyeshadows with my flat iron, with my parchment paper, and I'd have my little label maker and I would sit there and put them in these. And these were one of my favorite, favorite things to collect. I would just put them in here based on however I wanted to organize at the time and then I would have my little label maker and I would put my little labels on here and I put them in my kit and that was that. Over time these Z palettes became popular. I created kind of a cool toned palette and a warm tone palette. So this is what we're going to be using today because these are some of my oldest eyeshadows. I have a lot of eyeshadows in here. I have a lot that are MAC. I have some that are um Lancome. I have some that are Makeup Geek. This is an old MAC bronzer. This is a Stila. I think um, back in the day, Stila used to have the big eyeshadows like that. If you hear my dogs, they're playing in the background. Um, so anyway, this is what we're going to be going in with. I think this one might be Cocoa Bear, but it doesn't even matter. I think it's called Cheetah Bear now. <laughs> Soft Brown. Soft Brown is one of my favorites from MAC. And of course, MAC eyeshadow blends like a dream. It's fantastic. The quality is great. It doesn't take a whole lot of work to get it to look good. So, I mean, just a couple of sweeps and that's it. Not all MAC eyeshadows are created equal, though. They have several of them in this palette that are horrible. And then next, I'm going to take this shade right here. This is Swiss Chocolate. Once again, it's a MAC color. I'm just going to take a little bit on this. This is a Morphe 4411 brush. I'm just going to take a little bit on this fluffy brush. This is what it looks like. So it's just a just a, a nice looking brush. I'm just going to kind of blend it in in real circular motions right here on the end. Kind of like the crease and the the outer V. Just a little, little bit of dimension there. All right, y'all are about to judge me really hardcore right now, but I'm about to use and show y'all the two oldest products that I have in my entire collection, and it's eyeshadows. And I can remember vividly whenever I bought these eyeshadows. I thought they were so, so beautiful. I bought them in a salon that my mom had brought me to when I was 12 years old. <laughs> That's pretty old, y'all. I'm 40 now, so you do the math. But these are from the brand called Sun Silk. They're no longer in business. They haven't been in business since probably the early 90s. And these are what they look like. So this one right here is like a really pretty kind of a hunter green um, gunmetal color. And then this one is like a frosty mossy green color. And I haven't really used these very much. They were very highly pigmented whenever I bought them. 
and believe it or not they are still really really good quality they're very buttery they're super soft and i can't bear to part with them because they have such sentimental value so this is what they look like i'm gonna just give you a little swatchy swatch that is how they swatch and i'm going to use this color right here kind of to define my lower lash line so i'm just going to take this morphe what is this i don't even know morphe something brush and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go in i'm gonna i'm gonna kick off the excess because i guarantee it's got some fall down you know for this being a 28 year old eyeshadow it actually performs really really well still it just goes to show you that the stuff that was made in the 80s and 90s was just built to last so now for another oldie but goodie for the brow bone i'm going to go in with another mac product this is gesso or gesso from mac so this is a really stark white kind of a powdery thing and this is what the back of it looks like and it's just a really chalky white color that everybody and their mama used to use for their brow bone or they used to use it for like an all over uh, setting of the eye color but we're just going to put a little bit on our brow bone just to highlight just a tiny smidge just like that and then kind of wipe it off because it's a little bit too much and now I'm going to go ahead and go in with brows and for that today so I'm going to take an old school holy grail product that I just couldn't bear to part with and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow whiz in the shade dark brown and as you can see i have lost my spoolie but i still couldn't bear to part with it i'm just going to use a regular old like throwaway spoolie and brush my brows into place and then i'm just gonna fill in my brows just a little bit nowadays i more or less prefer the covergirl i think it's called the micro brow in soft brown that is basically this as a dupe and I also like one by Maybelline. I can't remember what it's called, but I have used it on my channel before. I think recently, actually. So it is really, really good. But um, yeah, Anastasia Beverly Hills always did really nice brows. And I, that looks like a really decent looking brow, right? And then to hold them suckers down, I'm going to be going in with a really old product. This is the Lancome Brow Expert Model Sourcils in the shade brunette and i don't even know how old this is this is probably 10 years old or more and it still works really good so it's just a really dark like a dark brunette brow gel and it holds them buggers down i have really big old long granddaddy grandpa brows whisker brows and they hold them down really nicely all right next up is mascara and fortunately for my eyeballs i do not have an old mascara and i recently decluttered all my mascara so i only have two left i have this max factor 2000 calorie dramatic volume mascara and i have this l'oreal voluminous lash paradise mascara this one technically is newer because i got this one last week at walmart so i'm going to go in with the oldest which is the max factor and it's really not that old i did a video on this just the other day because this was gifted to me from a lovely subscriber from a russian mystery box haul and i thought that was super super sweet max factor has been around for ever like ever and ever and ever and I have always enjoyed Max Factor products. Usually to get the amount of volume and length that I want, I go in with like two or three coats, but I do that with most um, mascaras anyway. All right, so next up is blush, and I have two different brands that are debatable about which one is the oldest or not. So the first one is the L'Oreal Visible Lift Color Lift Blush. This one is in Rose Gold Lift, and this one is in Peach Gold Lift. And they are both so, so pretty. I was influenced to buy these from Candy Johnson here on YouTube. Does she even make YouTube videos anymore? I don't even know. But they are so, so pretty. I had every single color and I just loved them so much. I probably either decluttered the other ones years ago or I lost them in the flood. I'm not really sure. But this is what they look like. And then the other brand that I have is from NARS. And of course, I have nars orgasm this is what it looks like and i have nars desire and this one is the most gorgeous like fluorescent pinky shade and then this one is like a rose gold iridescent gloriousness now this one has gone bad or something it's just really really clumpy looking 
and it feels really bumpy on the skin. It doesn't have a whole, whole lot of pigment. And then this one feels perfectly fine. A little bit on the chalky side. So this one is Orgasm. This one is Desire. I'm just going to show you what they look like on the back of my hand. So Orgasm doesn't even show up anymore. And then Desire is that really gorgeous like fluorescent color. So I think I'm going to go in with the L'Oreal Visible Color Lift Blush. These are cream blushes and it's so, so pretty. These are probably like eight years old or more. Um, so I'm going to <laughs> clean off my hand first. First and foremost, we're going to go in with at least a clean hand and I'm just going to tap it on the tops of my cheekbones. So really and truly on camera, it really isn't showing up too much, but in person, I do see a little bit. The texture is not the best, so I'm definitely going to declutter these for sure. In fact, I'm just going to throw those in the garbage. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's okay, but the texture on my skin is, is not the same as it used to be. It used to be a lot more creamy. It used to have a lot more pigmentation, and I think the same goes for the NARS products. I'm definitely going to declutter these. Even the packaging. The packaging, you know, that like soft rubbery material is now sticky. So I think I'm going to declutter these as well. So now I'm going to go in with, I think I'm going to just go ahead and use this Hourglass product that I showed you from before. So this is the bronzer, blush, and highlighter duo. And I'm just going to take a little bit and just tap it at the tops of my cheekbones just for a flush of color. I just need a little something because that um that L'Oreal product really didn't do a whole whole lot. All right y'all we are into the home stretch. I have just a couple of products left and then we are done. So now we are on to highlighters and this is one of my favorite favorite products to collect. I have quite a few in here that I think are super super old. The first one is of course from MAC and this is their cream color base in the shade Pearl. So this is what it looks like. And it's this really pretty, very creamy consistency. This is what it looks like. And I'll just show you a little swatch on the back of my hand. So this is what it looks like on the back of my hand. To me, uh, this product has turned a little bit. It's definitely a lot more creamy and emollient than what it used to be. It doesn't have really a smell at all, which is pleasant. And then the next highlighter, which is also one of my favorites as well, is also from MAC and is their Mineralized Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle. And this is their original packaging once again. And then this is what the inside looks like. And this is just a gorgeous champagne color. This was like champagne pop before champagne pop was a thing. And it's just a beautiful, very, very vibrant, natural looking, wet, highlighter and I just love it so much that one we're probably going to go in with but I wanted to show you the last one so the last one once again is from MAC and this is the Silver Dusk and whenever I bought this I bought this because of Candy Johnson she would wear this on her channel all of the time and her highlighter was popping y'all even in the old like old school cameras her highlighter was on point and so I went to my local MAC counter and I bought this I brought it home, I used it, and I hated it the way it looked on my skin. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. I think I've used this once, maybe twice, and it is very, very glittery. So, whoops, I almost spilt it. Lord have mercy. So that is what it looks like on my finger. And then on the back of my hand, this is what it looks like. And it is so, so shimmery, so sheeny but in person it is very, very glittery. So I don't know if I want to use that or use the MAC Soft and Gentle. What do y'all think? I don't know. Okay, we're going to go in with the, with the Silver Dusk. For old school, we're going to go in with the Silver Dusk color, just a little bit on the brush, which is a freaking lot. And I'm going to dust it off. Uh, I don't know. In all honesty, y'all, this is a little bit lackluster. I mean, in comparison to what highlighters have become now, this is a lot more subdued than uh, the stuff you can get nowadays. Nowadays, like Jeffree Star blinding from space stuff. And back in the day, this one was too much for me. So <laughs> go freaking figure. Now I'll put a little bit on the inner corner here. All right, y'all. Now we are on to the final thing, and that is lips. 
and I have three products that I think are probably the oldest that I have in my collection and I'm not really sure which one I should use. So the first thing um, that I want to talk about is the Rimmel Provocalypse. So I bought these and I think in every single color. These were like the long lasting long wearing lipsticks before long lasting and long wearing lipsticks were really a thing. But what you do is you put this color on first and then you let it set for a, like a minute or two and then you put on the clear coat and after a little while like it's really really soft really comfortable and a little bit on the glossy side but after the course of the day it becomes matte and it looks so so good so i have lots of different colors and i just love these i i don't wear them really anymore i probably need to throw these out because they are old back like 2013 I probably wrote an article about these back in the day and then the next thing is from Maybelline and this is their super stay color something <laughs> super stay color lipsticks and this is what it looks like so once again it was kind of on that same thing you put this color on and then you take this to like lock it in and whenever I was working if I had really long days, these were a lifesaver. So I wouldn't have to reapply very often. And then finally, I have a lipstick. And this is from the brand Vincent Longo. They used to sell these on Amazon back in the day. I don't even know if they sell it anymore, but I used to love this shade called Baby. And these always smelled so, so good. I mean, like I pushed it all the way up, y'all. So I saved this color, um, I guess because I liked it. Um, it has the best smell. So it smells like fresh papaya. They're creamy. They're luxurious. These were expensive at the time. So I want to say that these were like $24 a piece. And Amazon had a sale. And I happened to find it um, at the time. And I got these for like $3 a piece. And I bought as many as I could. This is the last one. So should I use this? Are not it's like it's a really pretty color though so this one is in the shade uh, bu, 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 kiss fatal so that's what we're gonna do and once again it has a really nice doe foot applicator doe foot applicator and it's gonna go on in mm -mm. no I don't like it I don't like it at all it smells weird mm -mm. nope not doing it this one's going in the garbage all right all right, we're going to do a smell test real quick. Mm, nope. Mm -mm. Nope. That one ain't going on my mouth. All right, let's see. Which one is this one? This one is Wish Upon a Berry. Mm, no, 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 no. All right. Mine's made up. I'm going to go home with the Vincent Longo shade and berry because those need to go in the garbage. So... It's just going to be what it's going to be. Dang, y'all. I think I'm going to have to go repurchase this lipstick. It is just so, so pretty. It feels good on the mouth. It is just a gorgeous color. And I just like it for this overall, like, everyday makeup look. It's just really pretty. And I like it so, so much. So that is going to do it for this full face of using my oldest, oldest makeup. I hope y'all found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, please give it a like and a subscribe. You know your girl would appreciate it. Once again, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I always appreciate each and every one of y'all. Please stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll be seeing y'all very, very soon. Bye.